Okay. We are in Welling Garden City at the Howard Center. And I'm gonna show you the first ever gym I stepped foot in. And I remember going into the gym, signing up, and then walking straight back out and not entering the gym for another two months. I just didn't wanna be there. I didn't know what I was doing. I was scared. But I'm gonna show you it because this is where it all started. My name is Chrissy Chella. This is my story and how I founded Honor Active. I'm gonna be taking you through the highs, the lows, and complete transparency. Because you are the reason Honor Active even exists. You are the reason I am here today sharing my story on this platform. I wanna take you through absolutely everything. <laughs> yes, guys, new hair, new episode, new hair. Why not? So tell us about why you started your fitness journey. There was a number of reasons why I started my fitness journey, but the biggest one was um, it was definitely my heartbreak, my first ever heartbreak. It was to this boy who doesn't deserve the air time. No, no. <laughs> it was to this boy who I wish nothing but the, the best for. I was young, I was in love. I thought, you know, this was my forever and it just didn't pan out the way I thought it was supposed to. I gave this person everything. Like I thought he deserved everything and more and I didn't give myself enough. I wasn't unhappy with the way I looked. I wasn't unhappy with who I, you know, what my body my body was like. I was unhappy with who I was in the sense of my mentality, the, my weakness to someone else, the, the fact that I didn't have enough control of my own emotions and where I wanted to be in life. And I remember when the relationship ended, I was on the train back home because I would always go and visit him. And I just sat back and I thought, I'm so sick and tired of feeling this way. I'm so sick and tired of trying to be something for someone else constantly that I'm not even focusing on what I want to do, what I want to be. These are heavy questions to ask a 16, 17 year old, but here I was on the train. And at the time, the, the train station was opposite Anytime Fitness, which was a 24 hour local gym in, ha in Howard Center in Hertfordshire, Welling Garden. I got off the train, I looked at the gym and I just thought, why not? Let me just try it. Let me just go in the gym and let me see what it's about. This gym right here, Anytime Fitness in Welling Garden City. I just remember, I will never forget when I first stepped into the gym. I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know why I'm even bothering. Signed up to the gym and then I just never went back for two months. I just thought, why am I doing this? I don't even know what I'm doing. There's no point. And then I just kept crying myself to sleep heartbreak, crying myself to sleep, heartbreak, feeling like I wasn't enough, feeling like I I just, you know, was never gonna see the light at the end of the tunnel. So then after two months, I went back and I said, you know what, I signed up, I'm paying for this membership, I need to go back, I need to try and figure out what I wanna do and a, a remedy to stop feeling so sorry for myself. I went in the gym and then all I see is this leg press. Here she is. This is the leg press. When I first walked into this gym, I saw the leg press and I was like, what is this transformer? I don't know how to use it. I don't know what I'm doing. And then I went straight over there into the cardio machine. Doing so much cardio every single day, but I was always intrigued. What were the weights saying? Why are people going to the weights? Why is there no women at the weights? Bear in mind, this was like seven years ago. So I'm still wondering at this point why there's not many women there. After researching, because I was always someone that wanted to learn, I always wanted to know how things work, the mechanics behind things, or why, why people did weights and not cardio, cardio and weights, you know? Research, research, learning, learning. I went back to the gym and I spent an entire day. And I just went to every machine and I was just trialing it. I was just seeing how it works. I was reading the signs, because there was nothing available at the time, like a fitness app, like Tone and Sculpt to show me how to use things, how to do things, 
where I needed to start. There was nothing like that when I started. So after months and months and months of going to the gym with my best friend Holly as well. So me and Chrissy met when we, we was in school. She was two years older than me. Then we happened to go to the same gym together. Um, we got close to the gym and um, yeah, the rest was, was history we just started getting closer and closer and then from then literally been friends ever since i remember at the time i asked holly to record me i was like i just want to see my form i want to see what's going on here because my back was hurting when i was doing an exercise when i was filming her it was so funny because like we had no idea what we was doing like i would just film i would just film her and that would be it like we wouldn't really know about angles and things like that and I'd be like on the floor trying to get like the best angles. So she was recording me and then I was like, ah, oh, excuse me, I look kind of good. And that was the first time I'd felt like that in such a long time because I constantly felt like I wasn't enough. Surely if you're getting cheated on, you're not enough, right? That's the, the, that's the thought process I had. And I realized at that point that I was always enough. I just had to kind of find myself. And I uploaded it on Instagram, not thinking anything of it. All of a sudden, I kind of got obsessed with the fact that I had this online portal where I could just journal my journey. I would post every single day for me. I used to come in here and I used to get the camera to be always behind me. And I'd come here and I'd look at myself and I would do workout videos. I would take my selfies. This was the room back in the day. It's still one of my favorite rooms. The lighting's amazing. That's how it started. Like I would just be like, hey guys, today I did this workout. Hey guys, I didn't know who I was speaking to. I was like, hey guys, I'm doing this way. All of a sudden, it just colossaled. There was women following me from the US, from Spain, from Asia, you know, like there was women all over the world messaging me going, Chrissy, like, can, can you show me how you do this? Can you show me how to do that? And at the time I didn't have a qualification. So I was like, I can give you advice, but I don't even really know myself. So that's when I got my qualification and I felt more secure in the advice I was given. But I think for her it was a good release and then she started to find it was her passion and um, yeah, it went from there. And I think as it time went on, both our passions grew, we enjoyed working out. It became like a daily passion that I would wake up feeling so motivated to do, not just for myself anymore, but for everybody else. And one thing led to another and here we are, a global community of 2.5 million followers and counting. I think at the time there was definitely people doing fitness, but there wasn't anyone, especially on YouTube, doing what the fitness industry is doing now. And I, I definitely think there was a handful of us when I started that kind of really stepped up and were telling women, hey, fitness is not about you prepping for a competition and getting the tightest abs and, and the biggest glutes you possibly can. Fitness is about longevity, it's a lifestyle. Fitness should be a high, a low. It's something that you, you take to empower and elevate your life, you know? So there was definitely, I, I don't think there was, I don't think there was many people doing that. And there was definitely never a platform where you could download and have all that information that you needed to start your fitness journey. And then when I started posting on Instagram about five, five years ago, I would say, five, six years ago, that's when the fitness industry was definitely shifting. And you start to see more girls going to the gym, lifting it, lifting heavier. You started seeing more people post about it. And this massive evolution started happening. And to this day, it makes me so happy. Like, I don't care where you get your information from, so long as the source is trying to tell you that fitness is about longevity. I was working at my uh, local Italian restaurant called Aqua Restaurant, an old, old town, Welling Garden. I loved working there. Like, I loved working there. Everyone was Italian from Venezuela, Brazilian, and we would argue, like, we were like, who, who didn't clean the toilet? Who did this? Who did that? And then we would come together as a family and we'd forget about the little pettiness and the little arguments and we'd come together and eat together at the end of each night. 
And that's what I loved about working at that restaurant. I loved serving the people, the regulars. I didn't care that it was a waitressing job. I just loved being on my feet and, and serving people. I don't know what it was, but I just did. And I remember I had at the time about 150,000 followers and Women's Best emailed me. And it was who my manager is till this day, Mazen. And he emailed me saying, we love what you do. We have been keeping our eye on you and we just love what you do. And we think that you should work with Women's Best. And I was like, oh my God, this is a dream come true. And then they offered me the salary at the time. And I was like, oh my God, this is even more of a dream come true. And I'll never forget that feeling. And Women's Best allowed me then to quit that job and be able to focus more on building and growing myself. And also then continuing to evolve my, my learnings with fitness and with health to able to utilize that to build further platforms that we'll go into a bit later. It was the hardest few years of my life and I just felt like I had no home. You know how people say home is like those four walls you go to? No, home is family. Home is the people that you love, the people who nourish you. And I didn't have that. My mum went away, my dad went away. And that's when I just knew like it was survival mode. I was just surviving. And luckily, luckily, I was blessed enough to have a best friend who was Holly. I knew my role when I met her was to just be her support. She had no one, um, you know, she was going through so much. And I think knowing she had me to lean on really helped um, because it was hard and there was tough days and, you know, there, there was a lot going on. Um, and yeah, it was tough. And she said, you are gonna be okay. You have me, I have you, and we're gonna get through this together. Had I not had Holly, I don't know what would have happened. Having Chrissy as a best friend, which is more like a sister, um, I just know that I always have someone there. She's on my back no matter what, I've got hers. Holly is... Holly is Holly. Holly is unmatched. She's uncomparable. She is my sister. Chrissy means to me, like she represents friendship, sisterhood, everything. She's the sister I didn't have. She literally just fitted into my family, just like she was always meant to be there. So yeah, I feel like to me, she's just always gonna be there. That's a part of me that I'll always have. And when all of this happened, you know, she and her family took me in. And her mum, who's no longer with us now, her mum sat me down. She didn't know who I really was at, the, at this time, like in the sense of I was just one of Holly's mates. But she didn't realize my relationship with, with Holly was actually really like solid. And she goes, so then, I hear you want to move in with us. Bear in mind, this woman didn't know who I was. And I was like, I just don't like where I am now. I was sleeping on the sofa in my cousin's house. Like, it was just the memory I, I never want to repeat in my life. So it kind of just happened. Um, she slowly started bringing more stuff around. Um, and my parents loved her. She literally was like a second daughter to my mom. Um, and yeah, it just, it just happened. Like, it just felt right. I wanted her to feel like she had a place that was comfortable. And I know my mum and dad felt that too. So yeah, I just think it just happened naturally. And Holly's mum goes, no problem. Bring your things. I'll look after you, but clean up after yourself. This woman didn't know who I was. She washed my clothes when I didn't ask her to. She made me food when I didn't ask her to. She paid bills and never asked me for a penny. Like who does that? Who does that? No one does that. And the fact that 
they let me stay in their house for a year and never once reminded me of what they did for me. When I made money, I went and bought her, her favorite car. And I was like, she was like, no, 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 no. I was like, stop. My next goal is to buy you your home. Unfortunately, I couldn't get to that goal because she passed away last year. This woman was my second mum. This woman was my, my guardian, everything to me. And to see her literally pass away in front of me, just sat back and I thought, yet again, I have two choices here. Spiral or be strong for my best friend. Holly has been there for me through everything. My mum falling really, really sick, my engagement failing, everything. So I can't be weak for her. You know, I've got to be strong. I can't, she can't be there for me at this point. I've got to be there for her now at this point, you know? And yeah, she is, she is by far one of the most important people in my life. So there we was, me and Holly working out Anytime Fitness with uh, our little cute outfits. I'm sure Sasha will insert some pictures that Holly has saved and wants to embarrass me. And I remember at this point, like, remember, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at low point right now. I'm at a point where I'm like confused about my life, who I want to be, what I want to do. I'm going to uni, I'm doing all this stuff. And then I see this boy and I'm like, oh, he's all right, who's that? You know, I'm over my heartbreak now. So I'm like, who's that? I knew him before and Chrissy had mentioned that she liked the look of this guy. And I was like, oh, I know him. His name was Jack. And I met Jack about six years ago and I'll never forget meeting Jack ever. And he came in at a perfect time. He came in when I needed him and he needed me. And yeah, it was, it was nice to see her have a little bit of happiness with everything that happened, so. And our relationship blossomed and, and we grew as not only partners, but as business partners. And together we knew that we had a community to nourish. We knew that we were blessed enough to have a platform where we could help millions of women better their lives. He was really into fitness, still is. I'm really into fitness. It, it, was, it was our passion. So we decided to build the Toner Sculpt app together. And the Toner Sculpt app came about at an idea where I just was, I was selling PDFs at the time to the community and I just realized it's very two di like one dimensional. It had no substance to it. It was a PDF, you download, you did the workout and it wasn't good enough. And that's my problem, like things are never good enough. And I sat Jack down and I said, we need to build a platform that women can come and talk to each other. There's so much variety. There's these delicious meals. Workouts are easy to follow. You know, there's descriptions, there's videos, there's challenges, there's this, there's that. It's a community. He was like, okay, well, you need to calm down. And I was like, no, we can do it. I know we can do it. There's something here. We need to do this. And he was like, I don't doubt you, but it's gonna take a lot of work. Jack is a very like how-to person and I've always been a think five years ahead person. I've always been the fantasist, the one that like thinks about things at 2 a.m. in the morning and writes them in my notes on my phone or jots them down somewhere and you know, I'm, I get excited. It's like, a, it's like a drug, I'm like excited over the future. Whereas Jack is like, a one move at a time kind of person. Think logistically, think process, how are things gonna work? We built it. We built it and we launched it. But because of the Im immense stress and us just kind of like butting heads and you know, us just working till 2 a.m and working these long 17 hour days, we were exhausted and the romantic side of things just melted away and it just didn't work. We didn't work any longer as a relationship. We was engaged, had this incredible brand and vision, but behind the scenes, we were arguing, we didn't sleep in the same beds and it just wasn't working. So 
I had to make the decision to walk away. Funny enough, we're still business partners now and we still butt heads now, but we know the vision is bigger than both of us. We know the mission is bigger than both of us. And I think that if it wasn't for Jack coming into my life, I don't think I would have ever built the community to what it is today and built Tone and Sculpt to what it is today because he definitely believed in my vision and a company takes an army. It cannot take just an individual doing it. So yeah, Jack's definitely, definitely an important man in my life. So what happened after you ended your engagement with Jack? 